Okay, I have four o'clock straight up. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to our Retronics webinar today. Uh, as an introduction, I'm Phil Myers, U.S. Sales Manager for Retronics, and this will be a very brief 30-minute summary of uh, our Retronics capabilities. And due to the limited amount of time, if you could please hold any questions until the end of the webinar in case folks need to jump off, that would be greatly appreciated. Or you can use your chat function to send questions in and we'll try and address those at the end. Uh, I would ask that you'd please mute your Unknown microphone. participant is now joining. Please mute your microphones until the end of the webinar to avoid unnecessary noise. Uh, also, uh, note that this presentation will be recorded, uh, so try not to use any profanity. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll start with just a, uh, uh, a key timeline points and a little bit of history in Retronics. We were established in 1992 uh, in our current Scotland facility. Uh, due to the success of our services, we then expanded uh, into the rest of Europe. Uh, in 1999, uh, we introduced our laser reball processing, and uh, in 2012, automated retin uh, capabilities. Uh, in 2018, we were AS9100 certified, which is a very big deal, and uh, recently expanded to India and the U.S. And this next timeline is uh, one that I'm especially excited to announce that uh, Retronics will be opening a new facility in Phoenix, Arizona as part of our expansion. Uh, this facility will be operational Q1 of next year and will have similar capabilities as the Scotland facility. And we're currently in the process of identifying and ordering equipment uh, at this time. Topics of discussion for today, we're going to talk about re laser reballing, uh, alloy conversion or retin, uh, obsolescent solutions, uh, CTE issues, PCB services, interposer solutions, and IC test. So to start off, uh, we'll talk about automated laser reballing. Uh, now, Retronics does both laser reballing and reflow reballing because some customers are a little resistant to change. But today, we're going to focus primarily on the laser reball since that is unique to Retronics. So, why reball to begin with? Um, a lot of times, you'll need to convert from uh, uh, PB free to PB for tin whisker mitigation. Um, a lot of IC manufacturers do not offer lead content terminations in their components due to export limitations. So OEMs, contract manufacturers, and component distributors can work with Retronics to convert product to lead content. Uh, some industries do require Rojas compliant products, so we also have the capability to convert their leaded product into Rojas compliant terminations as well. Uh, recovery of high value silicon. Uh, this is part of our obsolescence service where we rec can recover high value ICs, uh, desolder, reball, and replace, vacuum pack, seal, and ship it back to the customers uh, so that they can refresh the shelf life. Uh, we can repair oxidation on aged parts, take old oxidized spheres off, reball new spheres on, and we can address uh, CTE issues. Um, uh, by reballing uh, high melting point spheres for standoff. Uh, uh, the advantage there is uh, heat dissipation, better cleaning, and, and no voids. So Retronics is uh, currently the only company in the UK to offer laser reballing, and next year we'll also be the only company in the US. Uh, laser reball mitigates the need for additional reflow uh, thus protecting the device. So that's a, a very big deal. Um, a lot of uh, IC manufacturers 
uh, wants you to minimize the amount of reflows given to to their ICs. Um, so using a laser to perform the reballing is really the only way to guarantee that there's no long-term damage to the silicon. Um, we have the ability to pl accurately place balls down to 250 micrometers up to 760 micrometers. And we're the only company with approvals from uh, high rail companies uh, that you see there. So this first little video uh, is a um, short video of our deballing process. Uh, obviously, whenever the uh, ICs come in, we have to take the old balls off, and we want to do that without reflowing the parts. So we use a, a wave solder machine to uh, uh, place the parts um, over the, the solder wave, and uh, the solder balls uh, reflow and flow off, and we're left with a very nice uh, finish for applying the, the new ball. And again, this does not expose the internal IC to reflow temps. And it's an automated process. This is a, uh, a short uh, video and simplified description of how the laser reball process works. The uh, solder balls are dispensed from the singulation unit into the capillary, at which time the laser fires melts the ball so it drops and reflows onto the pad below. And we're using a uh, uh, neodymium doped uh, tritium aluminum garnet laser. Our reballing procedure, uh, all parts for BGA reballing are inspected. That's the very first thing that we do. We want to make sure that the ICs are good when they come in the door uh, from the customer. Uh, sometimes there's shipping damage. Sometimes there's damage from the manufacturer. Um, we want to make sure that they're, we're starting with good product before we ever start. And then all parts are pre-baked before rework, uh, ensuring that the uh, correct pre-baking conditions are followed and logged. Uh, the main reason we do that is because moisture is the enemy of a good solder joint. So uh, we want to make sure that all the moisture uh, and contaminants are baked away. The old spheres are then uh, removed uh, using the wave solder that we looked at in the previous slide. And then typically we'll do a first article batch consisting of about five parts to make sure that uh, all the settings and everything are at their optimum values. Uh, we then, after the reballing takes place, we do an automated mechanical check. And this is performed on 100% of the parts, on 100% of the balls on those parts. So a lot of data uh, is kept on that. And then go through final inspection, and then the parts are post-baked, vacuum sealed, and then repacked. This is a video of our laser reballing machine. And as this goes along, um, I just mentioned again that uh, most component manufacturers specify no more than three reflow cycles for their components. So the laser process enables our customers to meet this requirement. Reflow reballing obviously requires a full reflow to attach the balls. So the benefits of the laser reballing, uh, we have automatic robotic handling. Each sphere is individually reflowed by the laser, generating minimal thermal stress. Laser reballing is carried out in a nitrogen atmosphere. Uh, again, we can place balls from 250 micrometers to 760 micrometers. There's automatic fiducial alignment, which means that there's no special tooling required. And this can be a big cost saver to the customer uh, if you don't have tooling costs to, to set up special fixturing. All we really need to do to set up this machine 
is to have you, the customer, provide us a Gerber file of your PC board layout. And uh, we can use that to automatically program the machine. There's also no flux reflow required for the reflow. And there's a 3D camera for height measurement, a 2D bump inspection system. Pretty impressive machine. Um, also, we, uh, as mentioned, we do a 100% automated visual inspection uh, after each lot of ICs that we do. Uh, the mechanical check is uh, uh, done, uh, provides coplanarity, warpage, ball height, ball placement, uh, ball pitch, ball width, ball quality, et cetera. There's uh, like 11 parameters there that uh, it checks on every IC, again, on every ball on that IC. Very, very thorough. This is our cleaning system. Uh, essentially, it's a, uh, a very, very nice washing machine. <laughs> uh, we use a 20% aqueous or Aquinox and DI water uh, rinse or wash. Uh, rinse with DI water, and then the mach same machine also dries uh, the parts as well. And the, the nice thing about this machine is that parts can be kept in the original trays uh, to prevent handling damage. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is automated alloy conversion. And so why retin uh, electronic components? Why do we need to worry about the alloy? Well, uh, again, tin whisker mitigation is a big, uh, is one of the big reasons. Tin whiskers are growths um, in many shapes and sizes coming out of tin plated termination, mainly attributed to the stress in the plating. So these growths can extend to adjacent terminations, causing shorts. And this phenomenon has increased with the move to lead-free soldering. The presence of lead in the alloy has been shown to eliminate the formation of tin whiskers. And really, it's the only 100% uh, method of guaranteeing that there are no tin whiskers involved. Gold embrittlement is also another uh, means to uh, a reason to retin parts. Gold has been a big part of electronics for many years, mainly due to the corrosion protection that gold offers. But many times the layer of gold uh, was too thick, and this led to problems with solder joint formation, where the gold layer created an intermetallic condition that would then create fractures in the solder joint, making uh, brittle solder joints, uh, as it were. Uh, we can also uh, refresh their stock uh, of parts. Um, you know, most parts have a limited shelf life uh, before oxidation uh, takes over and, and uh, uh, will start to affect the, the solder joint. And uh, again, we convert also from lead content to Rojas as well. Uh, this is a, uh, a video of our automated um, solder dip or robotic solder dip. Uh, again, we initially visually inspect all parts for damage prior to rework. Uh, all the parts are pre-baked to remove any moisture. Um, parts are then fluxed. Uh, flux is applied. And then all devices are preheated before they are tinned. This is a very critical uh, uh, process, um, part of the process. And then uh, the parts uh, go into the solder wave uh, to be tinned. And you'll note the peeling action uh, as the part uh, comes away from the solder wave, it peels away. This uh, 
This allows a more uniform solder coating. Uh, it eliminates any solder tipping and uh, makes for a very nice solder joint. Um, solder purity maintenance is uh, carried out weekly and results are saved with uh, XRF analysis reports. And a solder pot temperature is logged daily uh, and we inform the process team if there are any issues with the temperature tolerance uh, per J standard 001. In addition to ICs, we can also do caps, resistors, coils, uh, pretty much anything with a, uh, a solder termination. And this is a picture of our uh, solder wheel uh, where we load the wheel with uh, capacitors or resistors uh, to uh, do higher quantities uh, of, of parts. Again, everything's preheated prior to the solder dipping process. And again, it peels away from the solder wave to ensure uh, the optimum solder joint. This is a uh, video uh, XRF analysis. Uh, whoever joined recently, can you please mute your microphone? Thank you. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is our obsolescence or reclaim reclamation solutions. One of the fastest growing segments of our business is the recovery of high value parts to help with obsolescence issues. What better way to solve an obsolescence problem than to salvage ICs from scrapped boards? Uh, the parts can be reliable, refurbished and tested, uh, thereby saving you, the customer, a significant amount of time and money. And it also reduces the risk of counterfeit parts since there is traceability on the parts already. Uh, the key to the recovery process is to minimize the heat applied to the device and our special rework process avoids thermal shock to the part for both removal and for retin. As mentioned previously, IC manufacturers specify less than three reflow cycles to avoid issues to reliability. So it is critical that the parts be removed without exposure to reflow. This is a, a video of our um, IC removal process. Uh, we use special lo localized heat uh, on the bottom or underneath the board uh, to heat the solder um, connection. Uh, to reflow the solder connection and at the very point that that solder connection reflows, the IC is pulled off the PC board. This uh, eliminates um, any reflow condition other than the solder connection itself underneath the board. Looking at our BGA IC recovery process, uh, First, we again pre-bake the parts. Uh, we remove the parts using our special low heat process. Uh, if uh, we then remove the solder, excess solder bumps from the BGAs, we reball using our laser uh, reballing process to avoid reflow. We clean the parts, mechanically test or inspect the parts. Uh, we can do an electrical test uh, if required, and then rebake and repack. And the process is very similar for leaded devices. Uh, we pre-bake, remove the parts, remove excess solder on the leads, uh, retin using our robotic uh, 
tinning equipment, clean, mechanical test, electrical test, rebake, and pack. Here's a video of our um, machine that actually repairs leads. Uh, we can also repair uh, straighten uh, leads on ICs that have been uh, recovered to make sure that whenever you receive the IC, you're getting an IC uh, as it was uh, delivered new to you. This uh, equipment also checks the uh, overall coplanarity pitch, lead deviation, sweep, and slant of the leads. And any failing devices are obviously segregated into different trays. Interposer solutions is one of the uh, methods that we use for uh, to address obsolescence as well. Uh, an interposer uh, is simply a, an adapter board. Um, say you have a part that has gone obsolete, but a new version is now available with the same or improved functionality, but in a slightly different package. A lot of times it's smaller. Uh, many times we can develop an adapter board for the new part that can fit on the existing pad pattern to prevent having to perform a new board layout, cost or saving you significant time and money. We also do PCB services, um, and very briefly, um, we are accredited to JDEC and IPC standards. Uh, we can do BGA rework, uh, coating, underfill, IC rework, pad and track repair, uh, remove solder and gold, and gold figure repair. And lastly, we want to go over uh, IC test. Uh, we do offer a wide range of tests to ensure that the ICs you are buying are not counterfeit uh, in any way. And uh, we can also use these as uh, verification of recovered uh, ICs as well. Um, visual inspection is uh, one of our tests. It's amazing what you can find out under high magnification. Uh, like lead defects uh, or whether a part has already been reballed, uh, black topping, uh, lead defects, tool or sand markings, um, a lot of things you can pick up just by doing a uh, high magnification visual inspection. 3D x-ray analysis is a, an excellent tool uh, to use to uh, analyze um, ICs, uh, IC connections, or, or IC connections to the PC boards, um, because we can check for shorts, voids, positioning, and other potential production problems. Marking permanency, uh, we can use to check for black topping. Uh, black topping is uh, essentially where they coat uh, the top of the IC and remark it. Uh, so we can essentially remove that and see what the original marking was underneath. Uh, you'll notice on the right here, um, the, the black topping has, and secondary marking has been etched away, and we can we can see the original marking that was actually etched onto the part. XRF. Um, Elements X-ray fluorescence is a very accurate means to determine the alloy content of package terminations, and uh, we use this pretty extensively. Uh, a lot of uh, our customers like to have XRF reports uh, with their shipment of uh, parts. Ionic cleanliness test is also used to uh, measure the conductivity or resistivity of a sample which can be related to the amounts of ionic materials present. Uh, ionic contaminants are typically flux residues or harmful materials that are picked up or left behind during the process and uh, you obviously want these to be very low. Uh, 
solderability test. Uh, this is something that used to be checked visually, but uh, this was subject to interpretation. So most customers now want a wet solder test, which is much more accurate and also conforms to JS standard uh, 002. Uh, you'll notice that the, uh, the lead uh, goes down into the solder and then as it pulls away, it's actually measuring the tension of the, uh, the connection or the, uh, the solder wetting to the lead. Curve trace testing is a, a very good way to find out if an IC is damaged or defective. Uh, a lot of things can affect ICs, heat, uh, ESD, uh, thermal stress, uh, shipping stress, you know, uh, and this can be a, a strong tool to uh, determine whether a component is defective or not. And it's also relatively inexpensive to perform. Key function testing is uh, another test that we can do. Um, this one we do need to work with uh, uh, the customers, however, to determine specifically what you want tested, uh, what parameters you need done so that we can uh, uh, work up fixturing to, to do the test. Flash memory testing can uh, also authenticate ICs and see if they've been used before. Uh, but we can also uh, program uh, the ICs uh, using the customer's data and read for accuracy and retention. So a good way to check memories. Decapsulation, uh, this is obviously a destructive test, but we can uh, uh, then check die markings and uh, bonding, bonding patterns to, uh, to make sure that the IC is what it's supposed to be. And extreme temp testing can uh, be used to perform reliability testing uh, on ICs or also to upscreen parts. Uh, if you have uh, parts that you want to try and upscreen from uh, commercial to uh, uh, industrial, uh, we can do that for you. And that's pretty much it. Um, I would like to uh, open up for any questions that, uh, that you might have. Um, we will be uh, offering more details, detailed webinars in the future. And if you have something specific you would like to see, uh, please contact me. Uh, my email here is phil.myers at retronics.com. And uh, if you'd like a copy of today's presentation, uh, you can send me an email uh, as well. So I would like to open it up for a few minutes uh, if anybody has any questions. Hi, Phil. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, this is Ray Stinger. I work with uh, DRS. We're actually a division of uh, Leonardo. I saw them oh. on your slide there in the beginning. Yeah, um, I got a uh, phone call right in the middle of your presentation on the uh, retinning of it looked like a kind of a large QFP device. Um, Couple of questions. Um, when you do that retinning, I'm primarily back up. I'm primarily interested in the uh, tin whisker issues. We're okay. a def defense contractor and sure. uh, do away with those. So um, when you do that retinning of a of a gull wing type of device like that, do you completely cover the whole lead with a leaded solder? Yes. Yes, we do. Okay. And do you deal with all different types of Package size and shapes, you know, SOTs down to a little discrete resistors, apps. Uh, we do. We we've done literally hundreds and hundreds of package types. Um, but you know, it never continues to amaze me that somebody can always have something different or new. Um, but that's the nice thing about Retronics. We're always willing to look at new packages as well, uh, or custom packages. Um, you know, we we also do connectors. We do. Uh, uh, special um, type of connectors, um, you know, lots of different uh, package types. So, yeah, uh, really all that we need is, uh, you know, uh, um, a description of the manufacturer's part number, um, or if you have a, um, a spec sheet uh, on the, the part, uh, we can use that to, uh, to make sure that, that we can do that part for you. But, yeah, um, very, very rare has it been that we have not been able to uh, 
to come up with a solution for someone. Sounds very good. We have a lot of old electronics that we support. Things were designed back in the 80s and 90s, and sure, just, just can't find those parts anymore with sure. lead in them. Uh, yeah, yeah. I also joined a couple minutes late, and just as I was getting on, um, I saw you were getting ready to open a plant in Arizona. Look like. Yes, that's correct. Um, you, yeah, in you the Phoenix have a, area. Do you currently have a facility in the United States at all, or? No, no, okay. just uh, just sales offices. Um, so this will be a, a manufacturing facility uh, or a service facility, uh, and it will be very similar, uh, as I mentioned, to the one that we have in Scotland, which is our main facility. Um, so it will have the same capabilities. So and we are targeting uh, opening that uh, Q1 of uh, of next next year. All sounds real good. Yeah, we're excited about it. Really appreciate the presentation. You bet. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions today? Okay. If not, thanks again for uh, for joining us. And uh, until we meet again, stay healthy and uh, have a great day. Thanks, all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.